What's going on, everybody? Um, we're going to talk about natural today. Natural portion shots, uh, more affectionately referred to as Maddie's. A um, couple things. You should develop a couple of skills, and this working with Maddie's will actually help you develop a couple of skills uh, needed along the way. Uh, First and foremost is going to be tree identification. <clears throat> the, I'm going to get a little closer so you can hear me. The trees that make good natties are usually the fruit bearing, nut bearing trees. Um, there are a few that don't produce nuts or berries that are, or fruits that make good ones, uh, such as cedar. Uh, but typically, a nut or a fruit bearing tree is going to be your best option and knowing how to identify or more specifically how not to identify uh, or how to identify the ones not to use is, is easier typically don't want to use pine uh, pine does make a good natty uh, but it's few and far between pine is a softer wood um, oak maple hickory cedar like i mentioned before uh, Mahogany's, uh, anything that's a hardwood is going to make a good natty. Uh, when it comes to selecting your natties, there's a couple of different things that you want to take a look, look for. Uh, me personally, I only make natties out of dead fall. Um, I, cutting on a live tree introduces uh, disease and fungus to the tree and uh, it harms the tree if not kills the tree. So I, I I just refuse to do it. Um, it it's plus a uh, deadfall fork is going to have more character to it. The other thing you want to look for is strength test. Now, this is a little piece of maple, and I've cut off a couple, a couple, just to kind of show you real quick. Um, cut them off, the way I do it is I'll grab it by my hand and go like that. That's a bad point. Um, I knew that to begin with. I brought this and this one out here to show you. Whereas this oak one, right, there's no way I can break that. Rotten trees usually give you very little option as far as uh, a good solid natty with the exception of one and that's the cedar and it comes back into identifying the trees that can and can't uh, most people would look at this all punky rotten tree and think there's no way there's natural fork in there and because I know it's cedar I know cedar when it uh, dies and starts decomping the heartwood stays solid. Uh, cedar is a very rot resistant, very bug resistant uh, wood. The other skills we want to develop are saw skills and knife skills. And this is really the only two tools you'll need to make a natty, uh, other than the information you need to actually find the right fork. This is an oak natty that I recently made. And this is a spalted maple natty that I recently made. And the spalting, uh, the lines in the spalting are just absolutely gorgeous. But what this is is actually two or three or five, however many different funguses fighting for territory. And every black line that you see in it is a boundary boundary line for different funguses and when you pull them back or pull the bark back and get it all cleaned up and everything it just becomes absolutely beautiful but you do need to be careful you need to watch out for rot spots uh, this one's got a little soft spot right here that i ended up filling with super glue there are ways around it like i said like doing super glue or whatever but you want to be really cautious about it because that rot can go all the way through and it can be undetectable so always do your strength test Check them on a regular basis, uh, keep them oiled up, keep them waxed up, uh, or completely coat them with poly or something like that. Uh, I 
don't like to steal a poly. Uh, I'd rather have just oil and wax. Um, so making an addy, it's not hard. Find you a fork, uh, cut it to a little bit more than what you think you're going to need. When I always tend to uh, start peeling my bark before I trim it, and that gives me there's two reasons. First off, it gives me handles. I've got more grip on this in order to uh, carve and do whatever I need to. And some of them you may have to carve down further and further and further to get to the wood that you're looking for, whether that be the size or the uh, grain or whatever it is. And if you cut it here, by the time you get everything down, it's going to be thinner. It's going to have a smaller fork gap. Uh, so, and having a good solid surface and cutting away from you. Start peeling that bark off. And we can already see this has got some really nice character inside. So just continue around. Until you get all the bark through. There are a few species, like con, that once it is completely dry, the bark will just literally peel right off. It's a good way to know that your natty is dry, as a lot easier way of do, doing this than, than having to sit here and scrape all this bark off. And you don't have to scrape the bark off. Literally, all you'd have to do is just cut this to size, uh, kind of clean up the ends a little bit, and put some bands on it and go. That's that's natty. Uh, I like to get down to the wood. I, I love. Uh, the different grain patterns and everything you see uh, when you get down to especially the aged spalted woods and when you start making that is once you do it for a while you'll actually be able to kind of see what's inside of it before you see what's inside of it and uh, like Forrest Gump's mama said natties are like a box of chocolates you never know what you're going to get um, Every single one of them is different. Every single one of them is unique. Um, they're, to me, the most beautiful uh, slingshots on the planet. Um, no disparagement to makers that don't use uh, woods or whatever like that. Um, I, I make slingshots uh, and don't use woods. And, but the thing about it is, let's say somebody calls me up and says, hey, I want a slingshot. I, I want uh, orange G10 uh, with aluminum core, orange G10 faces, uh, toxic green scales, and I want it uh, to look like a little plinker. I'm like, cool, yeah, not a problem. So the next guy can call me up and says, hey man, I want an aluminum core, orange G10 uh, faces with toxic green scales, and I want it to look like a little plinker. Absolutely no problem. Well, those two are going to look exactly alike. There's no real soul to them. There's no real character to them. Natties, on the other hand, you never get the same slingshot twice. I don't care if you pulled it off the same tree, same branch, if they were growing next to each other's siblings, they are not going to be the, be the same. They're, they're going to have different character to them. They're going to have a different feel to them. Some of them are going to have a little bit more bug rot than others. It's just... That little knot right there is being tough. There. So, starting to get some of this stripped down. And some of y'all look at this and go, Oh, that's kind of a little funky little thing. But yeah, it is. But it's unique. It's... it's, it's gorgeous and it's still functional.
got most of the bark off. So I can kind of look through the wood. Make sure there's no overly rotted spots. And start playing with it. See how it feels in my hand. Yeah, I like that way better. So the way I do it is I'll typically just kind of hold up my hand to see about where it's supposed to be. Take my knife, get myself a line, line, kind of make sure everything's kind of just somewhat evened up. And I'll take my saw and cut it off. Now, one of the cool things is when you cut your uh, tips off, you'll end up with a little bit of excess and uh, for people that do woodworking, uh, these make really nice lanyard beads. Um, but what I like to do with them is once I get the natty all finished up and everything, I'll set it down there as a target. Uh, that's, that's the first target for that natty. <laughs> cut my natties 99% of the time with the canned forks and you can see these are not perfect um, but that's a functional slingshot it's done uh, trim up the ends a little bit or clean up the ends a little bit put some bands on it that's a done slingshot you can take it further you can go through make sure everything's nice and even and polished up and uh, just satin smooth and yeah it'd be a nicer slingshot but it is still right there a functional slingshot it doesn't take a lot to make a natty um everybody should make natties uh, i really do believe that everybody who's into slingshots should, should get into making natties you can develop a sense of what it is that you like in a frame um fork width uh, offsets versus uh, capital wise or, or center handles and stuff like that. Plus, it's kind of a rite of passage. And if if you make your own slingshot, you're more connected to it. You're more, I guess, in tune with with, with what you're doing. And it takes practice and you're gonna mess up a bunch of them. Um, you're gonna mess up a bunch of them even after you quit messing up a bunch of them. I still do. And, but it, it's really simple. It's not hard to make a slingshot. It's not hard to make a natty. It's not hard to, to get out and shoot cheap and free, damn near free. But yeah, cool guys, later.